Hello and welcome to the Art Power Newscast. Today I'll be talking about the new Advanced Developer Bootcamp, a couple of articles that are related to the most recent Art Systems technology, an article that will give us some insight into to implement a CI-CD strategy, and as it is usual, we go over what is the latest from the Art Systems community. Art Systems has been working with the training partner IT App to provide a new and improved class, the Advanced Developer Bootcamp 2.0. This class promises to cover topics such as these ones. The classroom promises to be up to date with the latest from Art Systems and with some focus on what we can commonly find in projects from our partners and customers. You can join one of these classes in the already scheduled public boot camps that happen all over the world. For more information on this, you can reach the post at the following link. A member of the Art Systems.ai team, Magda Prada, published an interesting article where it covers the evolution of the recent AI assisted development feature in Art Systems. After the announcement of the Assistant last year, Art Systems picked up all the feedback from the users so that they could understand how they can further improve this feature. Even with all the success that this feature presents, Art Systems wishes to improve this technology even more. They are looking into strategies that could help with the data mapping and binding that would accelerate and assist all developers even further. If this article has grabbed your curiosity, you can reach it at the following blog post. Next, we are going to talk about reactive web applications and the fetch data security. An article by John Salamat covers how a reactive web application in the web does not have its resources protected in the same way as a mobile app. It goes over what could be the security pitfalls and what we should pay attention to. If you wish to read more on this subject, you can find the post at the following link. And now, going over to our hints and how to segment. This is an interesting article by Jordan Welsh where he goes over some tips and tricks that we should take into account when fine tuning the UI of our application in the reactive web app. He covers the key difference between a traditional web application and a reactive web app and what could be done to take advantage of the existing technology. An interesting article to read that can be found at the following blog page. Still on the segment of hints and how to's, we're going to talk about another article by community member Christian Marks. This is a two part article where he lays out some guidelines on how we can establish a CI CD strategy in our systems. It touches how we should adjust the development and testing team to this reality so that we make sure that these guidelines are applied and never affect production. To give it the proper read, you can reach the blog post at the following page. Following hints and how-tos, let's check what has been happening lately on The Forge. After looking at the community activity on The Forge, the following is our selection for this week's top picks. After the Forge segment, let's go over to our idea of the week. Last year, the feature to allow us to convert aggregate to SQL was announced for traditional web applications. And that is the subject of the idea of the week. The request to allow us to do something similar, but for reactive web applications. The concept is to convert the aggregate into a data action, which has an advanced SQL inside. Also, as part of the functionality, this would map the output of the SQL to the output of the data action. If this sparks your interest, you can reach the idea at the following page. And with that, we reached the end of today's edition of the newscast. Thank you very much for watching and please join us next time for more of news by OutPower. Have a good day.